All right, my hero ultra impact players, let's have a chat about this banner right here, okay? It is called the Searcher of Sound Waves and Tentacles Recruit. And we need to talk about whether you guys should be pulling on this banner or not. So first off, the future character is a brand new UR, Shoji, the first of his kind, and that in and of itself is going to make people want to pull on this banner, okay? Then we also have this really awesome moment from the anime that they are trying to bait us with, uh, where Bakugo apologizes to Deku. That is gonna make people wanna summon as well. And then we have the cute Koda, who is also gonna make people wanna summon because of his cuteness on the memory, right? But don't be fooled. Do not summon on this banner, no matter how good the character looks, no matter how good the memory looks, right? You should not be summoning on this banner because the global anniversary is at the beginning of February, pretty much right after this banner, okay? And we are gonna have new celebration units, more than likely, that's what they did last time with the fantasy units, right? And those units are going to be broken, okay? And honestly, Honestly, I don't think Shoji is all that great, but let's talk about let's talk about the memories and the the characters, right? We'll take a look at them in depth. So, looking at the art, phenomenal. Like I said, he looks cute. You want to summon just for the art. The art looks amazing. But then when we read the effect, right, getting to know each other, when equipped by a mind type character, increases character's critical hit rate by 25% and critical skill impact by 10%. If there are any heroes on the team, decreases critical hit rate of all opponents by 15% for three turns up to one time. It's actually a decent summonable SR memory. I'm not gonna lie. I can't I can't like tell you guys like that's a really bad effect. That's actually decent, okay? 25% crit rate, reducing the enemy's crit rate is decent, but I don't feel like you're gonna use it and a lot of content in the game. You're probably not going to use that in VE Tower. You're probably not going to use that in PvP. So you don't need to have this memory. Plus, it will go into the general pool after this banner. So you'll more than likely pull it later anyway, since it is an SR memory, right? So even though it's cute, you don't need this memory. All right, so that's the first thing you can skip on. The second thing is the UR memory. I loved this moment in the anime. It was really, really good. I know a lot of people probably feel the same way. Okay, but let's read what it does. Increases character's max HP by 50% when equipped by a mind type character. After character receives one attack from an opponent with lower max HP, increases character's critical skill impact by 15% for three turns and plus ultra gauge by 10% up to five times. Multi-hit attacks count as one attack. This memory, although it futures Deku and Bakugo, for whatever reason, they decided to release it alongside Shoji, and it's specifically designed for him to give him extra HP, and then in turn give him extra skill impact, critical skill impact, and extra plus ultra gauge, okay? So let's see if that's even necessary for the character, because if that is necessary for the character, that kind of sucks that you need this memory to make the character useful. Um, so let's take a look at his kit. So his plus ultra is called Octoblow. Deals 650% damage to a single opponent with a low chance of stunning them for two turns. Increases character's max HP by 30% for three turns. And this skill has Bullseye. A low chance sounds bad, but it's actually decent because whenever you have more crit rate, that low chance becomes a medium chance to stun, which is nice. For the first action skill, it is called Octoswing. It deals 425% damage to a single opponent with a low chance of stunning once again, medium chance with the crit. The opponent for two turns. Increases this skill's skill impact by 45% when the opponent is affected by nullify status ailments, which is pretty much the whole meta right now, right? So that means he will be able to hit fairly hard against a single opponent and more than likely stun them. Okay, so a cooldown time of four on that, not bad. Action skill two, Dupla Strike, deals 250% damage to all opponents, increases character's damage relative to max HP, increases character's max HP by 30% for three turns, and this skill gains Bullseye. So another skill of Bullseye, and you can do more damage on the AoE the more HP you have, which is good. So having that 50% extra max HP memory on him is actually solid because it's gonna increase your damage with the skill, and this is an AoE skill, right? So that's, you know, it's looking like that memory is going to be useful, but it doesn't seem necessary yet, right? So that's good that the memory isn't necessary yet, but let's take a look at the auto skills. And so for the first auto skill, it's called Tentacle Search. 
increases the stun, binding, and confusion resistances of all allies. That is beautiful. Until you see this. Excludes character. Oh, so when we're in PvP, Shoji can still be stun, bound, or confused. That's trash. That's really, really bad because even one character getting any of those things on them ruins your skill chains. It ruins your plus ultra, ruins your uh, turns, right? So that's that's really not that great. When character is affected by stun, binding, or confusion, increases the resistances to each of these status elements for all allies up to two times. So that's good because then after the first time you get stunned, then you'll be able to resist future stuns and confusions and binds, which is nice, but you do have to be stunned that first time and by then it's probably too late because your skill chains have already been interrupted too much that you're gonna lose, okay? If you're talking about PVP. In PVE, this is a great thing. In PVP though, not the greatest. If character does not initiate a critical attack one time, increases character's critical hit rate by 10% for three turns, okay? That's decent because that means it's just going to increase his crit. There's no problem with that. After character initiates critical attack one time, increases character's max HP by 10% up to three times. Okay, that's decent as well. So each time you're hitting a crit, you are getting extra max HP up to three times. So an extra 30% max HP, which is decent. That's not terrible, okay? And then for auto skill two, increases critical hit rate of all allies by 5% every turn up to six times. That is phenomenal when it comes to PVE. As far as PVP goes, like it's good, but it's not anything too crazy. And then also increases max HP of all ally UA high class 1A characters by 20%, including himself. Okay, so he's just gonna have a ton of HP and that is going to make him fairly hard to kill. At max advanced leveling, right? He has 51,765 HP which is decent. And then if you increase all that HP by all those amounts, right? He's gonna have a lot more survivability. I don't think he has a high enough HP stat though to warrant his kit without the memory though. I feel like you need the extra 50% 50, 50 extra max HP to make him really good. And so I hate that, like when they do this with banners for new characters where it feels like you need the memory to also make the character useful, okay? In Shoji's case, I will admit, it doesn't feel as necessary this time, but there is one major thing that makes it feel like you have to have the memory with the character. And that is the fact that nowhere in here does it say Shoji increases his own plus ultra gauge. And since he doesn't increase his own plus ultra gauge, that means you are now relying on a memory to do that, which is this, which increases his plus ultra gauge by 10% up to five times, okay? After he receives one attack from an opponent with lower max HP. So, yeah, the other problem with this is if you wanted to run Shoji in PvP, right? There is no speed on the memory, doesn't give you any speed there, and his kit does not give you any speed, okay? So you are going to be potentially trying to build a team that goes second. You're going to be going second no matter what if you're trying to run Shoji on your team because he has no speed, okay? So that means you're going to be building a team with this idea in mind that you are going to get stunned or confused or bound or one of these things on Shoji at the start and it's gonna mess up your skill chains. So it's gonna be hard to build a team around this character planning for the possibility that one of these things happens, okay? It can be done, but it's gonna be hard. Now, I think this character could be useful, potentially, with other characters like potentially Christmas Jiro because he increases the max HP of himself and allies, which is good, right? And then Jiro, after being hit so many times, gets rid of status elements. And then if Shoji has been hit uh, by any of these status elements, he'll give extra resistance to allies on top of that. So those two together could work fairly well, okay? As a defensive type strategy. The harder part is filling in the last unit. So I feel like this is just a, a hard character to fit into a team for PvP. He doesn't have any speed increase, okay? And he doesn't have any plus ultra gauge increase. That makes him very rough to use in PvP. Now on the PvE side of things for VE Tower, since VE Tower is back, at least for right now, we don't know how for how long necessarily, uh, the crit rate is really good, right? Having extra crit rate is good. He has four turn cooldowns. That's very good, okay? He also does not have plus ultra gauge though, which is kind of necessary 
for VE Tower. And I don't think any of these count as technicals either. So since none of these count as technicals, this one might actually with the increase in skill impact, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure none of these are technicals though. So he, I'm going to go on that basis, that idea that he doesn't, he also doesn't have technicals. Okay. So he's lacking a lot of things for PVE too, that can make him very useful, but he has some things that make him good. Like the stacking crit rate is honestly not bad. Stacking crit rate for allies is insanely good utility. So like in terms of like, if I was to place this character into a tier list, I'm guessing that I would probably end up putting him around A or uh, maybe S for PVE, for VE tower, because I think he is actually gonna be fairly useful there. But then when it comes to PVP, like probably B or C, like he's not gonna be very good at all. He's gonna be kind of one of those picks that you just do for fun, unless the meta drastically changes here with the anniversary that's coming up. And we move away from speed and status element notification to something else, right? So we'll have to wait and see. But overall, I don't feel like he's gonna be a broken character. I feel like you can easily skip on him other than the fact that, you know, his art is amazing and he is the first Shoji in the game. So people are going to obviously want that. And then the memory you can skip on other than the art, once again, for the UR memory and same thing for the SR memory. You don't need the memories all that much. You don't have to have this one, but it does make Shoji a lot better, right? And I kind of hate when you feel like you have to pull both of them. So that's very rough. And if that's the case, then that means you're probably going close to pity to get both the memory and the character, unless you're extremely lucky. And that is just a waste of hero gems. So yeah, my overall advice on this banner is to not summon, to save your hero gems. This is like the easiest skip so far that they've given us and to get ready for the global to your anniversary. Anyways, guys, that is it for the video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you guys did enjoy this video, this information, please consider going down there, hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.